In the world of sport, South Africa are mainly known for their national rugby union team, the Springboks. In football, however, they have not been as successful, largely in part due to being banned from international competitions as a result of apartheid. But in 1996, a nation that was beginning to heal under the rule of Nelson Mandela partook in the African Cup of Nations for the first time, and it would lead to a sporting miracle that announced them to the world. This is the story of South Africa's miraculous AFCON debut. South Africa were first allowed representation on the FIFA Executive Committee in 1956, which led to them being a founding member of the Confederation of African Football. They planned to partake in the 1957 African Cup of Nations. However, the South African constitution at the time prohibited their teams from being racially mixed, and so they would either send an all-white or all-black team to the tournament. This was unacceptable to the other members of the confederation, and as a result, they were expelled from the tournament. In 1961, South Africa were banned by FIFA for not falling in line to their anti-discrimination laws, and although this suspension was briefly lifted in 1963, it was later reimposed. In the 1990s, things began to change. South Africa began to remove the apartheid system, and in 1994, they held their first democratic election, and Nelson Mandela, a man who had spent 27 years in prison for opposing apartheid, was elected president. Due to apartheid being dismantled, South Africa were allowed to partake in World Cup and African Cup of Nations qualifiers. They failed to qualify for the 1994 editions of the World Cup and AFCON, but things would soon start to change. Nelson Mandela was a firm believer in using sport as a means to unify the people, and in 1995, South Africa would host the Rugby World Cup. Mandela saw this as the perfect opportunity to allow people of different races across the country to come together with a common goal. South Africa would win the Rugby World Cup in a legendary moment of sport. The wounds the nation had felt were starting to heal, and in 1996, it would be the turn of the football team to help unite the nation. The coach of the South African football team, Clive Barker, was at the Rugby World Cup final and stated, When I watched Joel Stransky dropkick that goal against New Zealand that won the Rugby World Cup for South Africa, I sat right behind the posts. I knew how much pressure that result was going to put on us, because really, it was black South Africa that had supported football, and they wanted to say that they could also do and emulate what the rugby players had done. South Africa would host the 1996 edition of the African Cup of Nations, which would be their debut in the competition. It had formed part of a meteoric rise of Bafana Bafana, as they reached 16th in the world rankings. Expectations were high going into the tournament, and draws of both Argentina and Germany were strong statements of intent. South Africa's first ever African Cup of Nations game would take place against Cameroon, one of the most successful teams in African football. They hit the ground running in Johannesburg with a 3-0 win, thanks to goals from Philemon Masinga, Mark Williams and John Mashu. A 1-0 win over Angola sealed South Africa's place in the knockout rounds, with Mark Williams netting again to get the winner. Williams had been offered £2 million by Graham Taylor before the tournament to stay at Wolves to help them in their league campaign, but Williams stood strong and answered his country's call. South Africa would lose to Egypt in their final group game, but still advanced as group winners. Clive Barker was keen to help take the pressure off his players, deciding to get them together after the Egypt defeat and share a few beers. South Africa would face Algeria in the quarter-finals. The majority of the game passed by without a goal, until Mark Fish put South Africa in front in the 72nd minute. Algeria would level in the 84th minute, but only a minute later, John Mashu put the South Africans back in front to seal their spot in the semi-final. South Africa getting this far was already a huge achievement for the nation, but they were keen to go even further. It would be a huge task, however, with Bafana Bafana facing Ghana. Described by many as the Brazil of Africa, they were widely expected to reach the final. The game kicked off in front of 75,000 people in Johannesburg, and in the 22nd minute, the stadium erupted when Mashu gave South Africa the lead. Sean Bartlett doubled their lead shortly after half-time, and a second from Mashu sent them into the final, against all the odds. 
It was the stuff dreams are made of. South Africa had defeated a giant of African football, and now had a chance to seal a miraculous major honour. Mandela knew this was another opportunity to help bring the nation together, just as he had done a year before, and according to Mark Williams, Mandela would come and see the team each day at 6am to help inspire the team and give them confidence. The United Bafana Bafana were one game away from making history. On the 3rd of February 1996, South Africa would face Tunisia in the African Cup of Nations final. A crowd of 80,000, including Nelson Mandela, were in attendance in Johannesburg. Going into the game, a surprising change was made by Clive Barker, with Mark Williams demoted to the bench. Many wondered what Barker was thinking. The game kicked off, with the two sides pining to win their first African Cup of Nations. The first half passed by goalless, and South Africa decided that a change was needed. Barker soon went back on his initial decision, and agreed that Williams was needed. In the 65th minute, Mark Williams was brought on for Phil Massinga. It was a change that would prove to be a masterstroke. In the 73rd minute, a South Africa free kick was swung into the box. A header came off the post before the ball was played back into the middle, and there to meet it was Mark Williams. Williams headed it into the net to open the scoring. He was mobbed by his teammates as the stadium went wild, with Nelson Mandela wearing the South African shirt, waving his cap in joy, with a huge smile on his face. And things were about to get even better. Two minutes later, Dr. Kumalo won the ball in midfield and played a sublime ball to Williams, who was through on goal. He slotted it beyond the Tunisian keeper and made it 2-0. Their dreams were about to be realised. Soon, the full-time whistle went, and Bafana Bafana were the champions of Africa. A nation divided for so many years was now united in joyous scenes, with fans celebrating together in both the stands and the streets. Nelson Mandela's ideology of using sport to unite the nation was working like a charm. A team filled with players from a variety of ethnic backgrounds had come together to lead their nation to glory. Nelson Mandela, still in the football jersey, handed the trophy over to Captain Neil Tovey, who lifted it high in the air. A second huge victory for the nation of South Africa in two years was helping to pave the way for a life beyond apartheid, as the barriers of racism were drastically being torn away. South Africa's victory at the 1996 African Cup of Nations is not just a fairy tale underdog story, but a huge victory against racial discrimination. Whilst it will always be the 1995 Rugby World Cup victory that gets more attention, the 1996 African Cup of Nations victory helped this change to continue. The AFCON victory showed that coming together could help the country achieve success, and in 2010, South Africa would become the first ever African country to host a World Cup. And without this victory, that may never have been possible. Clive Barker believed that the win played a huge part in South Africa's transformation as a society, stating, People don't realise that football broke down more barriers than any politician did. Football had started changing things already in the 70s. We were making a change through football, and really, sport overall did it for South Africa. South Africa's victory is a reminder of what can be achieved if our differences are set aside, and it also shows that football is indeed so much more than just a game.